Gibson, great guitar, but the strings are a little bit high. And uh, after about 80, I guess about 87 takes or something, so, somewhere around there, I said, I told Ricky, I said, if you sing it one more time, you got to play guitar. <laughs> but it was like, you know, yeah. that many takes, you know. But back in those days, you know, everything was recorded on two track, four yeah. track, you, you know. Couldn't drop and, in a little and, uh, bit. <laughs> yeah, the, the studio we, we recorded that was actually a studio called Master Recorders at Wally Hyder Studio, and Wally Hyder was out, actually our first engineer, and uh, it was great. But we were just kind of, you know, learning the song. For the Jordanaires were there; they were singing background, right. and they didn't know the song, so we had to sort of play it and rehearse it with uh, the Jordanaires. And uh, after about 80 something takes, man, and I told Rick, I said, man, you got to play guitar if you want to sing it one more time. Because you had to do Your everything live, you know, yeah. everything was mixed yeah. as you go. And it was yeah. Great. Yeah, I've experienced having to play a, <laughs> an acoustic guitar with high action yeah. for a three hour show and like thinking, oh God, man. <laughs> the electric guitar feels pretty good afterwards, doesn't it? <laughs> oh man, yeah, I love it. <laughs> But a great story, I got a great story for you if you want to hear it. Yeah. Uh, Chet, you know, Luther Perkins had played with Johnny Cash. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Luther played this style. Yeah, yeah. So he came in Chet's office one day at RCA Records. And uh, he came in really excited and he said, Chet, I got it. I got it. Chet said, Luther, what are you talking about? And so Luther said, I got it, man. You know, you guys are like this, up and down the guitar neck all, you know, what are you playing? He said, I got it. Here it is. He said, you guys are looking for it. You know, like. And you're looking, but, yeah, I've got Luther it, here it is. He yeah. got a kick out of that with telling <laughs> Chet, you know, you guys are looking for it, but I got it. The, the, the echo, um, this, um, like slapback echo. Were you using that back with Ricky? Or was that done in the, done in the studio, or did you use it uh, at all? Actually, we did some in the studio uh, with the tape. And uh, I didn't use a lot of echo. I did most of it with my fingers. Right. When I first heard Scotty Moore, I said, man, how's he getting that? So, I mean, I, I didn't know anything about an echo amp or, you know, at that time, and uh, so I was doing it with my fingers, right? And um, I thought it was pretty interesting. And, and when uh, Scotty came and sat in and played with us one night, I was working with Bob Lumen, the Scotty and DJ, and, all, and Bill Black, and all the guys came right. in and sat in. And we all got up and jammed and played, but Scotty wouldn't play any solos. He had his guitar plugged in yeah. uh, to a different amp, he wouldn't play any solos. And I said, Wait a minute, this guy played on all the records. And he's not playing any solos. I'm playing all the solos on this, all the songs. So I find out when we take a break, he goes out to his car and he brings in this amp. And when he hit a note, he went. I said, "Wait a minute, what is that?" So you know, he it, the way he did it was just yeah. very simple. Yeah. And I said, "Man, I'm fighting it." You know. And with the echo, it spreads it out a yeah. But that, I thought that was pretty interesting. Then. Yeah. When I found out he was using echo amp, and I was fighting it with my fingers. And in in trying to copy something, you developed a unique style. But that goes to show you, you know, you don't have to have something to do something. I mean, yeah. you can figure it out. Yeah. There's always a way to yeah. figure it out. I know. Um, I, I met Vince Gill with Albert Lee, and uh, oh man, and, <laughs> and Vince, Vince is doing these spins, you know. And he said he'd heard Albert Lee, but didn't know he had a string bender. So, so oh, he yeah. worked out some of he worked out some of them without the bender, you know. So. Well, I guess one of the very first string bender that uh, the B bender uh, guy was uh, Clarence White was one of the first. Yeah. And um, he was a great friend of mine, and uh, we played together in the Birds. And I yeah. played on the. Are you with the Birds, birds for once, right? Yeah. 
and uh, Chris Hillman, um, that's where I met Chris, and, and of course, you know, Graham Parsons. Right, yeah. And the birds. And, but that was interesting, the, the bee bender is, it's a whole different uh, fingering, uh, you know, for the fretting on the neck. Yeah. But, you know, if you're doing it with a mechanical bender, yeah. then you have to you have to work around it. To, you you know. got a, I heard you play something before, I thought it was a B string bender, but you just did it naturally. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, you know... between uh, Ricky Nelson and Elvis, what was, uh, what was going on then? The Ricky Nelson was up to, what, 60, well, you know. <laughs> you mean? Uh, you, you played with Ricky up to, what was 58 to 62 or 64? Um, actually, I, I played with Ricky from, uh, actually, I met him when I was 16, so it would be uh, 57 uh, into, uh, 64 when we did a TV show called Shindig. Oh, yeah. And uh, Johnny Cash called me to do a TV show, and uh, at that time we didn't know what it was, but uh, Ricky didn't want me to uh, play with other artists. And uh, he gave me a reason that uh, his my sound was his sound, and he didn't want... Uh, anyone else yeah. using that right. sound. So anyway, um, I, I spoke to the manager and Ozzy and and they agreed that it would be okay. So I went to, because Johnny wanted me to play Slide Dobro. So that was cool. And um, I just told Ricky I wouldn't be on camera. I'd tell him to put me off the side and nobody would know. Anyway, it worked out great because I went and did the TV show and it was a, it was a show called Shindig many artists and uh, I, I was on that show for one year well it was only on for one year it was a, oh. it became a number one show it was like the weekly uh, pop show English producer Jack Good oh Jack Good produced yeah. it and he was a big oh. fan he's 